Well, guys, thanks for uh, coming down. This is maybe the third or fourth in-person uh, founders meeting of Marble It Up. Since we started the game back in 2017. Um, and That's the number four times. That was the, those were the, we, we did, we've been doing remote work on this thing since uh, before it was cool, pre-pandemic. Um, and we're about to launch uh, what, is, what is pretty much the culmination of our original vision from way back then. So thought it'd be fun to get us all together and uh, talk about the game. Sound good? Sounds yeah, good. Sounds great. Uh, you guys want to introduce yourselves? I, I'll start. I'm Mark Fromeyer. I'm the executive producer of Marble It Up, also the instigator. Um, and uh, Marble It Up for me came from, well, it was it was actually the launch of the Switch, the pending launch of the Switch that made me think, gosh, you know, we got to do another marble game. Um, back in the day, all of us worked on the Marble Blast series of games um, at Garage Games and then at Bad Habit Software. And when that game went away, it sort of left a void in the gaming universe. So I think, I, I think it was February of 2017, I read an article about the Switch and it said two important things. One, the specs of the machine, and two, that all the major publishers were poo-pooing it. Um, and that said to me, you know, that's going to be an amazing platform for uh, independent games. And they really, they embraced it. And then it went on to obviously dominate. Um, and I think it was like, I, I kind of struggled around to find the right people to work on it. And then I ran into you yep. in late March of that year at some local coding event. Yeah. And I was like, hey, Ben, who are you? What are you all about? <laughs> As if you didn't already know me. No, I know, I know. But I mean, for the benefit of, of viewers. Oh, oh so we're, we're, we're transitioning. Yes. Oh. So now, it's, now you can inter introduce okay. yourself. Got it. Uh, well, my name's Ben Garney. I've uh, been a programmer in games and other things for nigh on 20 years now. And uh, for Marble It Up, I've been kind of doing the day-to-day -day development and making sure things get done to a greater or lesser degree. Um, of responsibility, which I share with Alex, and um, making physics work and doing all kinds of stuff. So I've been digging into this thing since the beginning. Um, like Mark said, ran into each other at an event not too long after the Switch launched. Yeah, it was, it was like, like I think the Switch after. launched at the beginning of March, and yeah. that event was at the end of the month or yeah, something right. like that. Yeah, right. So you talked me into it. <laughs> and so we ended up pulling the old crew together and then finding people in the community who had been longtime fans for years and years and years. Um, and they loved the chance to get to work on it. And, you know, we pulled it all together and we launched on Switch. And then we got an opportunity to be on Apple Arcade. And we shipped on that, which was also an exciting journey. And now we're working on this uh, ultimate launch. Final, final, final push. That's right. Getting Marble It Up Ultra yes. into the universe. Yep, and um, we're all in that glassy-eyed pre-ship phase, soon to be replaced, hopefully, with that dazed post-ship phase. So, so next, on ne the, I think you and I got together and we're like, okay, now we have to recruit somebody to design levels, and we recruited Alex. For good reason. Yeah, I'm Alex Swanson. Uh, I worked at Garage Games, got my start at Garage Games uh, on Marble Blast Original and then Marble Blast Gold. And then I was the uh, level design and uh, art lead on Marble Blast Ultra uh, when that released on Xbox. And uh, then had a continued career through uh, Garage Games, went into the corporate world of Facebook games and Disney games. And uh, after I was out of that, I was kind of at uh, a place in my career where I was ready to go back to my roots. These guys called me up. I was, at the time, doing just some independent contracting and working for a non-games company and thought it would be a great time to go back to the world of marbles. So I'd, I'd say, though, I mean, you, you did, back in the day, you did almost all of the maps for Marble Blast. That's right. right? I, did, I, did all, I did all the maps for Marble Blast and Marble Blast Gold. Yep. Uh, and nearly all of them for Ultra. We had Tim Asty doing a few there as well. And I would say that on Marble It Up, I, I mean, the, the, the bulk of the levels came from 
e either were either you made them or you directed them. Um, uh, one of the things I've noticed is there's a like in the in the level naming you tend to bring in a lot of science and math. What's that all about? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess to a large extent, the levels themselves are very geometric. That's kind of the core of the game is physics and geometry, the way that the marble physics interact with these interesting pieces of geometry. So the level names always seem to sort of naturally flow out of that. And a lot of the forms that I bring in, the shapes that inspire the levels come from, you know, science reading, you know, astrophysics, whatever I happen to be reading about at the time that I'm building the level will often inspire little things here and there. And so well, as, as you look back over that, I mean, I guess the course of your career, the, one of the things that's really cool to me about this game is that, you know, what Marble Blast was, so I did the lion's share of the coding and the physics and the gameplay and all that. And you did a hundred percent of the level design. So we were for like five months, we were just back and forth. I was like, make it harder, make it harder. Uh, uh, that was 2003, maybe? Uh, sounds about right. Yeah, early, early 2000s. Like, and, and then in between that time and when we started Marble It Up, I mean, you went on to uh, do a whole bunch of different games and then came back to this genre. What, between the two, like what, what, what did you feel like you were able to really express in Marble It Up that wasn't possible in Marble Blast? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, just the technology advanced so far between the two in terms of what we could build, just in, even with the tools we were using to build them. Back in, for Marble Blast, we were using Torque, which used old Quake-style maps, a very restrictive format that uh, caused many uh, headaches <laughs> using it. Uh, nowadays, we can build with true geometry, with collision with anything we want, with the modern game engine. Um, we were able to bring in things like gravity surfaces that we had always tried to emulate in Marble Blast to varying degrees of success. Um, we were able to really just make levels bigger, uh, make curved surfaces, uh, essentially, you know, hills and other interesting things to interact with. So yeah, I mean, the capabilities were endless in, in the modern so uh, software, but we also wanted to keep it pretty simple. You know, we could have gone into even more complicated geometry, but there was a sort of essence of simplicity. Uh, Ben's giving me looks here because he, he uh, has to deal with the fallout of the geometry we did you, make. You're talking about moving, rotating, curved surfaces that are networked, <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. Okay. But my point, yeah. my point is like there is also a, a sort of sort of uh, minimalist simplicity that we wanted to maintain between Marble Blast and Marble It Up in terms of the aesthetic and to an extent the gameplay, although obviously we pushed that a little bit further, there still isn't, uh, there's still still a, a simple essence to it. And these levels are all about this interaction with these simple geometric forms uh, with the physics. Uh, and that I think is a pretty good transition to talking to Todd, sure. who has to take these extremely simplistic uh, forms yeah, so, uh, and make them beautiful. Well, well and, and just to layer into that introduction, uh, the the one of the things we got dinged for, I think, a lot back in the day with Marble Blast was just that the visual style um, of the, the overall visual presentation of the game was, you know, perhaps garish, uh, certainly super simplistic. And I think when we were at the very beginning of Marble It Up, we're like, we want this thing to be an absolutely beautiful yet simple game. Who could possibly come up with the look? And then we're like, oh, Todd. So Todd, that's. So my lead into you. Transition yeah. over here, I guess. Um, okay, let's see. So I'm Todd Pickens. I'm the art director for Marble It Up, Marble It Up Mayhem, and the now to be released Marble It Up Ultra. Um, and I'll uh, jump around here a bit to speak to what Alex was saying. Yeah, it, it's. It, I think the the thing that is stand out and unique about Marble It Up and the current iteration at Marble It Up Ultra is. Everybody knows what balls and surfaces are. They play with toys when they're a kid, and it, you don't get any any more simple and and uh, relatable than that. And I think you're talking about the the clean aesthetic and everything. I think that is why the game is so appealing. It's the challenges that emerge from those interactions of very simple physics that make it compelling, and it's that that's timeless for me. Um, so uh, when uh, these guys pinged me and brought me on, um, Alex had a vision 
Um, and Alex and all of us have worked together for years at different companies on different projects. And he had this idea of uh, sort of uh, uh, paying tribute to the previous games, but also capturing a sort of 80s Trapper Keeper style. And so if you look at those who know the original, some of the older Marble games, uh, Marble Blast, et cetera, will recognize elements that we tried to sort of emulate and then push further to create our own identity and our own visual style. Well, um, and even Marble Madness. I mean, even Mar Marble, Mar Marble Madness, Blast sure. yeah. was itself an homage to Marble Madness. Yes. Marble It Up yeah. is an homage to Marble Absolutely, Blast. Absolutely, yeah. It's every standing on the shoulders of giants, as it were. Right. Um, and I guess, so, so as an art director, my job is to sort of uh, capture the direction of the designer and maintain that visual style and a quality bar and hit deadlines and that's it it's nothing <laughs> sexy or exciting about it it's a grind and then be like but, why did you guys break the shaders but, the end re exactly <laughs> but the, the end result is um i think a, a team of four core people with the help of some others who we brought in over time has done amazing things for the genre and created a fantastic game i know my my 12-year-old nephew has been addicted to it since he was like six or seven, and my elder brother is addicted to it. He does pipe fitting, comes home from work all day, and plays Marble It Up. So oh. we're, we're hitting a pretty broad audience well, there. And, and, you know, that's one of the really cool things about this game is when you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but when we, you know, this, this was kind of the core team, and then when we first put out the word to the community that we were building a new Marble game, uh, a couple of guys came out of the woodwork and said, well, we're building a new Marvel game too. Maybe we should join forces. And I'm going to interview them in a subsequent video here. That's Jonathan uh, uh, and Fletcher of Alvios. Um, this time around, when we did Ultra, we brought on even more folks, right? So, and, and actually we had Matan, who was a legendary Marble Blast player. Uh, not just Marble Blast player, but play, he... build Marble Blast yeah. Platinum, and yeah. I mean... The, platinum literally class. carried yeah. the torch. The amount of reverse yeah. engineering that man did yeah. was uh, um, legend. Yeah, Matan had been, had been uh, continuing the Marble Blast tradition for over a decade uh, in the time that, that there was no other game out there other than the community projects. Uh, and along with some of the other designers who worked on that, uh, Threefolder and other people, we then were able to bring in a uh, group of new designers new to us, not new to the Marvel genre. They'd been building games uh, previously, or sorry, building levels previously for Marvel Blast, and then had started building on Steam, on the workshop, uh, a tremendous set of levels that frankly, in many cases, in my opinion, put mine to shame. And so we brought them in saying, these guys and, have learned from the best and have gotten even better. And, and, we gotta and to, to your point, I mean, this is, these are, when they, I mean, some of them must have been 10 years old, eight years old when right. they were playing yeah. Marvel Blast, and they, and, you know, grew up and went to university and wanted to make games. And so it's, it's like this multi-generation uh, game legacy that's, to me, is just super cool. Yeah. Um, uh, so, good stuff. Yeah. I don't think you see a lot of game franchises that are, like, on the third generation of developers. You gotta talk toward the mic. Oh. I should probably do that. It's not often that you're you not the boss of him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to what I want to talk to. I, I don't think you often see game franchises where it's been carried on to the third generation of developers. Um, you know, where like Mark wrote the original, and then the community carried it on for a number of years, and then I, you know, came on more recently for Marble It Up and rewrote everything a couple times. Um, and you know, now we're hopefully kind of wrapping up the big arc of Marble It Up with the ultra release, and then we'll see what happens after that. Um, but you know, maybe collectively we'll inspire a bunch more kids, and in 20 more years, they'll come up and make their own Marble game. So, so you brought up Marble It Up Ultra. What this is? This is the kind of the culmination of what we set out to do when we started Marble It Up, which was. Uh, you know, this is going to be our first release. Like, what are the what are the big hits on this one? Multiplayer. We got <laughs> multiplayer. multiplayer. Mm -hmm. We hit all the platforms. You know, con all the consoles, PC, Mac. It's available on uh, iPhone through the Apple Arcade as Marble It Up Mayhem. Um, a whole bunch of new game modes uh, and just uh, you know, beautiful. I, I, the other thing I, I really like about this is, you know, we I think one of the things that Marble Blast was always known for is 
uh, just really realistic physics. Um, and when we went and wrote Marble It Up, I think we actually did a better job on the physics of Marble It Up, particularly in Ultra, uh, than Marble Blast had. And that's, um, there, there are some things in there, like just the, the level of refinement and polish that has gone into uh, both the single player and the multiplayer, to me, is super exciting. Yeah, I can't wait to see the response to the multiplayer, because I think maybe for the first time ever with a Marble Blast slash Marble It Up game, I think we've got some game modes that are really, really, really good. I mean, Gem Hunt has been a standby for a long, long time. I think it has a lot of fans, but like Sumo is super fun. Zombies are super fun. Soccer, Soccer is fun, super fun, depending on who you are. Um, and uh, probably forgetting another one, but it's really cool to see these parts of the marble code that we've kind of cracked in Ultra that we never quite got right, I think, in any of the previous games. Well, and I would say it's benefited tremendously from the Mayhem release, where we had the time to observe those game modes, play them, and then go back and polish them. Whoops, whoops, oh, <laughs> break. <laughs> Sorry, hold that, hold that okay. thought, Alex. There's a dog invading the film shoot. Dog attack. This is all live and never gets cut. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing it live. All right, say that one more time. All right. Um, and I think it's really benefited that we first released uh, Mayhem on Apple Arcade because we've had time to play these multiplayer modes. We've had a long time to polish them. Uh, we brought up a few of the designers from Mayhem to a specific polish team, and uh, they were tasked with and did a phenomenal job really tuning in the new modes. They brought in Sumo, essentially built it from the ground up, uh, and we had tons of testing on it. You know, it's really going out the door as polished as can be. Yeah. No, I, I think that as, as far as the gameplay in multiplayer goes, like, it's really, really good. It's really, really fun. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think when we, when we launched uh, when we launched Marble It Up originally on the Switch, and that would have been, like, fall of 2018, um, it got dinged, I think, on a number of reviews because it was we had, like, what, 40 levels or something like that. Oh 40 gosh. at launch, no multiplayer, didn't have a lot of polish in it, but it was still, there was still a lot of really good stuff there. Now we've got, I mean, how many levels are we shipping in Ultra? Uh, 117 single player levels and I think 40 multiplayer levels. That might 40, be over. Wait, 40 no, multiplayer. Not 40. That's not right. Let me re-say that. Uh, 117 single player levels and over 20 multiplayer levels. Yeah. And marbles and hats. Trails. And trails. trails. Yep. Um, what, uh, okay, I, th I think we're, we're looking good here. What uh, lightning round, favorite marble, favorite level, favorite cosmetic overall? Alex. Are we, are we taking turn? Oh, you're, yeah. that's my turn. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna go with uh, Galaxy for the marble. Um, oof, tough one. I'm gonna go with uh, the much updated version of energy for the level. Uh, that level went through a ton of work, many revisions, and the final version is pretty awesome and visually spectacular. Uh, and overall cosmetic, hmm, I have to go with the uh, Fletch Point arrow through the head. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'm, I made, I think, all but one or two of the, well, maybe three or four of the marbles. Um, so it's all a blur. Um, honestly, I'd say that my favorite marble is a marble that hasn't been made yet. So uh -huh. we'll see what happens. The, up, the, the first uh, if DLC I'm pack. If I'm to pick, it's, I don't know what we ended up calling them because I named them all when I was creating them and then these guys renamed them. Um, it's either, uh, God, what was it? Biohazard? Orange Crush? Is that what it's called Orange now? Crush. Orange Crush. Hmm. The Orange Crush or the, the, the skull and crossbones on the black marble. Pirated Heart. Nice. Um, Level, any level with a bounce surface. Best update as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was an, another new addition to, is the bounce surfaces really add another element of gameplay Whole that we didn't have dimension. there before. Yeah. Um, a bouncy dimension. Ben? <sighs> favorite marble, favorite, favorite cosmetic, favorite level? Favorite marble, rolling skull in the purple ball. I don't remember what it's called, but I love that guy. I like having the flame trail with him. It feels appropriate. 
just as a note for those Mystery Men fans out there, yes, that marble is a reference <laughs> to the bowler. There's <laughs> a lot of reference in the marble designs to a lot of things. Neo Tokyo, Akira. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Why don't we have an Akira trail? Hmm. Favorite, uh, kind of do. favorite hat. I like the football helmet a lot. The football helmet is a good hat. Favorite level. Mm. What's the first cog level? Cog Valley? Cog, cog Valley. Valley. Yeah. Still strong. That, that's the, yeah, OG, the OG cog level. Yeah. Mm, it's cog beautiful. Valley is, is a solid level. Um, I played all the levels enough that it's difficult to narrow it down because that's like I have this continual blur of marble level in my head. But Cog Valley. Cog Valley is a good one. One of the things, by the way, that I really love about Ultra and Mayhem is um, I was watching some guys doing a Let's Play of Marble It Up, the original, and they got pretty far. I mean, they played it for like half an hour. I think they probably got like seven or eight levels in. And like level eight was when the polish level went up a lot because we kind of like, I think we've been intentionally simple, but then also like figured out a lot about how to like visually polish it. And um, they're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, oh, my gosh, why do they have to play 20 minutes to get there? And in <laughs> Mayhem and Ultra, it is absolutely beautiful from day one. From the, mo from the first moment. Yeah, yeah. The very first moment. Yeah, I, think, so I'm, I think as much credit for that goes to Alex and the designers as it does to art. I mean, four years, five years of iterating with a pretty fixed palette of textures uh, shaders, special effects, you learn how to m get the best results. Like baking a cake with a fixed number of ingredients, you get better at it. Right. But their designs create the sort of the canvas that that goes on. So if there's not interesting geometry, then it doesn't matter what art you put on it. So. Yeah. And I would say that the especially the first couple of chapters have benefited tremendously from the attention given to them, the years of yeah. time that people have had to kind of see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, and they've been revised multiple times to get it just right. And I'm really proud of the flow that we have there. Um, and especially some of the aesthetics we were able to bring in with some of those later levels, like uh, Leaf on the Wind, I think, is one that stands out. The sort of current ultimate level in Chapter 1, um, just one that came together really well. And if I want to go back, I shouldn't just pick other people's levels. My favorite level that I made in the game... <laughs> Um, I think is probably Citadel, which I think represents a pretty high point in terms of what we could do with uh, the geometry. And I think artistically it came out really well as, as well. And just one of those big um, final chapter levels that sets the tone for the whole game. It's a great one. It's got yeah. bouncing. It's got bashers. It's got curves. It's got power-ups. It's got speed. It's got... Artic you know, careful precision moves. I want to change my answer. Okay. My favorite thing is bashers. Bashers, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Todd little, is the creator of the bashers. Just a face on a block, but somehow it worked. Created well, an antagonist in it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> and everybody hates it. That angry and it hates persona. it, loves it. In, in a sense, aren't we all just faces on cylinders? Aren't we? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. All right, guys, we've got like we've got like one. Well, hang on, we didn't get a favorite of anything. Oh, yeah. you want me to tell my favorites? What's your favorites? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, my favorite level uh, changes over time. I think the uh, it's escalation is the one that I'm currently. It's that that's the one in bonus chapter four, right? Um, and what's the one with all the spinning slappers in that oh. same chapter? Oh. Uh. <laughs> it's 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 what is the, it the one that I just straight? no it's no, not dire straight that's what came to my mind too um uh come on this is like our signature level from yeah. the uh, at the end of the demo I should know this it's a beautiful beautiful I literally level. just I, put it into the demo and I can't remember I, well well <laughs> I I it will show up on the screen as we're narrating this anyway but it's uh that one I I keep coming back to those two actually bonus chapter four I think is probably my favorite chapter in the game. Um, just because it's got it, it's got such a nice variety, really challenging levels. Um, as far as the uh, marbles and cosmetics, you know, um, I think the the homage, the uh, the the psychedelic uh, multicolor marble homage, still is one of my very favorites uh, in the set. Um, I love the D twenty marble, you know, old school D and D fan. Um, and, uh, you know, any cowboy hat will do. Yeah, cowboy hats are good. Can't get enough of those. Truly. 
yeah well guys thanks for uh thanks for coming down to our third ever in-person founder meeting of Mar marble it up <laughs> uh, and uh let's uh let's ship a beautiful game here and uh and what i don't know like we're what six weeks out something like that yeah all yeah. right six knock weeks on out. wood knock on glass yeah yeah check out the demo <laughs> demo available on soon. xbox and perhaps and other platforms and uh we can't wait for you to play it just on xbox we'll try that again you want to go hard on saying what day it's going to come out no way. <laughs> no. Well, what you, need, what you have to it's do is... It's ship when it's done, but yeah. it's going to be done here very soon. Just say every day from July 1st Sometime to August now. 31st. <laughs> um, yeah, check out the demo. Available on Xbox before the release of the game. Marble It Up Ultra coming soon. Yep. Say it. Marble It Up Ultra coming soon. July 1st, July 2nd, no. July 3rd. Oh, <laughs> role playing game of the year. Oh, online role, <laughs> yeah, multiplayer role playing game of the year. Yeah, for sure. So we got a lot. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Chip it, guys. All, All right. right. Boom. Oh. The long nightmare. Thanks will be for over. tuning in. Oh. Marvelup.com. <laughs>